Okay class, now that we've determined how to draw the molecular shape of a molecule, the next key skill is to be able to determine if the molecule overall is polar. This is very important because molecular polarity can determine a molecule's solubility in different solvents like water or alcohol. It can help to determine which end of a molecule is most likely to interact with a neighbor. It can determine which part of a molecule is most likely to be reacted with in a chemical reaction. So all of this is leading up to helping us determine and predict chemical reactivity. We've done our Lewis structures, determine our electronic geometries, determine our molecular shapes, and now we're going to be able to talk about the polarity of a molecule. Now, it's important to make the distinction between a molecule's polarity and a bond's polarity. So we've talked about polar bonds. Bonds may be polar, and the thing that determines whether a bond is polar is it depends on the differences in the atom's electronegativities. And we've explored how to determine whether a bond is polar by taking the difference in their electronegativities and seeing if it is a large enough difference to make a bond polar. However, this is not the exact same as saying that a molecule is polar. You may recall we talked about a polar bond between two atoms, it could be polar, but now we're going to talk about whether the whole molecule has a polarity or a dipole associated with it. And the rule here is that a whole molecule is polar if and only if both of these following statements are true. So both of these statements have to be true for a molecule overall to be polar. The molecule must contain one or more polar bonds. And the molecule is asymmetrical. So the word asymmetrical means not symmetrical. It means unbalanced somehow. Another way of saying that is, if any line can be drawn through the center of the molecule to make one half of the molecule, right half or left half, not symmetrical or different with the other half, then the molecule is polar. So that if the top half is different from the bottom half, if the right half is different from the left half, then we say that the molecule is unbalanced or asymmetrical. If we have a polar bond, at least one, and an asymmetrical molecule, then we say that the molecule overall has a polarity. So, here's an important note. It may not always be obvious when you have a symmetrical or an asymmetrical molecule. The best way to determine if your molecule is symmetrical is to compare all of the bond dipoles using some math that you may or may not have had called vector analysis. And if you've had physics, you've probably done vector addition, um, in which case we would be able to add up all of the bond polarity vectors and see if there's an overall net vector after we've added them up. Well, if you've not had physics, then you've, not, you've probably not done vector analysis. So it may just be more useful for you just to remember which shapes are symmetrical and which are not. So that's what we're going to do here. So moving on to the next page. <clears throat> so first of all, 
to determine which molecules are symmetrical and asymmetrical. If the bonded atoms, that is all of the terminal or outer atoms, are the same kind of element, then these molecular geometries are considered symmetrical. Linear, trinal planar, tetrahedral, trinal bipyramid, square planar, and octahedral. Those are all symmetrical. Again, this is only if the bonded atoms are the same type of element. If the bonded atoms are the same type of element and you have a bent, a trigonal pyramid, a T-shaped seesaw or square pyramid, then they are asymmetrical molecules. So we're going to take a look at these examples here. We're going to ask the question, answer the question, are the following molecules polar or nonpolar? And remember, to be able to answer this question, we have to work all the way back from Lewis structures. So I'm going to generate the Lewis structure. Then I'm going to determine the electronic geometry. Then I'm going to determine the molecule's shape. And then I'm going to ask myself those two questions. Are there polar bonds? And is it an asymmetrical molecule? So several steps are required to be able to answer this very simple question. Simple question, easy to ask, but it takes a, several steps to be able to answer it. So here I go. In H3, I'm going to generate my Lewis structure first. Nitrogen, three hydrogens, nitrogen, three times hydrogen equals three, Five valence, so we've got eight valence electrons, two, four, six, I've already distributed six, two left, normally I would put them on the terminal atoms, hydrogens can't take more than two, so there's the nitrogen taking those other two. I've used them all, so there's my Lewis structure for NH3, or ammonia. This is not the ammonium ion. This is ammonia. Neutral molecule. Now, I have my Lewis structure, right? So now I can determine my electron geometry. How many electron domains do I have? One, two, three, four. So this is going to be an electronic geometry taking up an arrangement of a tetrahedral geometry. So a tetrahedral electron geometry. I've got a lone pair, three hydrogens. And there's my electronic geometry. And then with my bonded atoms, I've now got my shape. What is the shape of this? This is a, there's a pyramid. There's a top of the pyramid, base of the pyramid. This is a trigonal planar Pyramid, sorry, trigonal pyramid. Shape. Shape, remember, is molecular geometry. Now remember, the question that was asked, are the following molecules polar or nonpolar? So we've done a lot of work here, but we haven't answered the question yet. So let's try to answer the question. Is the molecule polar? Remember what two things I have to have for this molecule to be polar. I have to have one or more polar bonds, and the molecule must be asymmetrical or unbalanced somehow. Well, are there any polar bonds here? Nitrogen and hydrogen. Nitrogen is approximately uh, an electronegativity of 3. Hydrogen is 2.1. The difference between them is 0 0.9, and that falls in the range of being polar. So yes, there is at least one polar bond in the molecule. And the second question I have to ask myself, is it asymmetrical? 
And remember, if we can draw a line so that any side of it is unbalanced, then it is asymmetrical. Well, I'll tell you what, any time that you have a lone pair, a single lone pair that's not perfectly balanced out on the other side, we know we've got an unbalanced asymmetrical molecule. But if we didn't remember that, we could go back up to this and we could say, aha, asymmetrical trigonal pyramid. This is a trigonal pyramid. It's one of our asymmetrical shapes, right? So yes, it is asymmetrical. So is the, is the molecule polar? Well, does it meet both criteria? Are there polar bonds? At least one, yes. Is it asymmetrical molecule? Yes. So is it polar overall? Yes. So there's my answer. It is a polar molecule. So just to reiterate, in order to be able to answer that question, I had to go all the way back to my Lewis structure, draw the correct Lewis structure, then draw the correct molecular shape, then answer these two questions. And if both of these questions are yes, answer is yes, then I have a polar molecule. All right, I want you to try these other three. Pause the video now, work through these other three. Remember, you're going to draw the Lewis structure, save some space, so that then you can draw the three-dimensional geometry or shape, and then answer these two questions. Do you have polar bonds, and is it an asymmetrical molecule? And if that's the case for both of them, then the molecule overall is a polar molecule. And remember the way that we drew dipole arrows for a bond, for an initial bond, for an individual bond, we could draw a dipole arrow show it pointing toward the more electronegative atom. We can do something similar for the whole molecule. And we can say this whole molecule has a polarity, has a dipole. And the dipole is pointed in that direction where there is more electron density at that end of the molecule than at this end of the molecule. So that's when a whole molecule is polar. Now, remember that each of these little bonds has its own bond dipole. And if we were doing the vector addition, we would add up all of these vectors and it would add up to give an overall molecular polarity vector pointed in the up direction. So there's a little bit of the vector sum or the vector addition for those of you who have done that sort of math. Okay, pause the video and continue on for the other three. All right, I'm assuming that you've finished with these other three. And so now we're gonna, I'm gonna work through them with you. So we're going to do a carbon dioxide, and I'm just going to very quickly do the Lewis structure. I'm not going to walk myself through the Lewis structure, but uh, we've done this enough that, that, uh, that I will assume that you know how to do this, or you can review that in the previous section. So there's the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. Molecular shape, it is a linear shape, linear shape overall. Notice up here because the bonded atoms, terminal atoms are the same, a linear shape is symmetrical and you can see that how it's symmetrical that both sides of that molecule are identical, right? So this is a symmetrical molecule. Do we need to ask about whether it has polar bonds in it? No because we already know that it fails this criterion. So I could ask if there are polar bonds. And yes, there are. The carbon-oxygen bond is a polar bond. But for the second criterion, this is not an asymmetrical molecule. It is balanced. 
So it fails one of the criteria, and therefore the molecule overall is nonpolar. It is not polar. Moving on, methane. CH4 is methane. The Lewis structure looks like that. The uh, three-dimensional geometry is a tetrahedral molecule. Tetrahedral. And now we ask ourselves, are there polar bonds? Well, the carbon-hydrogen bond, carbon is approximately 2.5, hydrogen is approximately 2.1. The difference between them is only 0.4, and that does not qualify as a polar bond. So no, there are no polar bonds. We never even have to ask ourselves whether it is a symmetrical or an asymmetrical molecule because we've already failed one of the key criteria. There are no polar bonds in this molecule and therefore it cannot be polar as a molecule overall. Therefore it is a nonpolar molecule. By the way, this is a tetrahedral shape, so it does meet the criteria for symmetrical molecule because all of the terminal atoms are the same, so it is symmetrical. Or I should say it is not asymmetrical, so it's not asymmetrical. So in this case it had neither polar bonds nor was it asymmetrical, so it failed on both of those criteria. Moving on, PCL5. If I did the uh, Lewis structure fairly quickly here, now we get a Lewis structure there that looks like that. A three-dimensionality now, I have, my, I have five electron domains, so I'm going to have a trigonal bipyramid, north pole, south pole, and three around the equator. And those are chlorines, CL. And we can see right away that this is symmetrical, isn't it? Remember, a trigonal bipyramid as long as all of these bonded atoms on the outside is, are the same, it is a symmetrical molecule. And right away we can tell if it's symmetrical, then it is not going to be polar because you have to have asymmetry, an unbalance, and therefore we know it's a nonpolar molecule without even looking at the polarity of the individual bonds. We already know it's a nonpolar molecule because it's trigonal by pyramid shape. Okay, and that is how we determine if a molecule is polar or nonpolar overall. Remember there are two criteria. The criteria are that the molecule must contain one or more polar bonds somewhere in it, and the molecule must be asymmetrical or unbalanced somehow.